Hello and welcome to today's video where we're looking at Rule 8, Action to Avoid Collision. As always, we're going to look at the text of the rule and then apply that in a couple of different situations. So Rule 8, Action to Avoid Collision. We'll just head straight for the first paragraph. Any action taken to avoid collision shall be taken in accordance with the rules of this part and shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, be positive, made in ample time and with due regard to the observance of good seamanship. This paragraph is very much the common sense paragraph. Obviously in accordance with the rules of this part means the action needs to comply with the rules, we know that, it needs to be positive, in ample time and you've still got to observe good seamanship. It's all stuff we already know. The second paragraph. Any alteration of course and or speed to avoid collision shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, be large enough to be readily apparent to another vessel observing visually or by radar. A succession of small alterations of course and or speed should be avoided. So for example, in this crossing situation, obviously the blue vessel is going to have to keep out of the way of the green vessel. If they just make a small alteration, yes they've made a bit of an alteration, but the green vessel hasn't been able to see what they're doing. And of course as the blue one gets closer they've got to make another alteration, and this is what we mean by a series of alterations. It's not obvious to the green vessel what the blue vessel is doing. And of course the blue vessel has got to continue making more and more alterations until they get clear. Instead of that, what they should do is make one single bold alteration. Now, when the green vessel is looking over, they can immediately see that the blue one has taken action. They can see a complete change in aspect. They'll actually be seeing the vessel head on now, instead of seeing the broad starboard aspect. If there is sufficient sea room, alteration of course alone may be the most effective action to avoid a close quarters situation. Provided that it is made in good time, it is substantial, and it does not result in another close quarters situation. The easiest way to explain this is to look at a speed alteration. In this case, the blue vessel is going to half her speed. There, she's instantly halved her speed of approach to try and avoid collision. And look at how close she gets to that green vessel. That alteration of speed was not an effective alteration. And bear in mind, in this diagram, that alteration happened instantaneously. In a real life example, of course, you'd have to allow time to run that speed off. From this, we can see alteration of course alone may be the most effective action. It's immediately obvious, it's very easy to undertake, and you don't need to allow all that time to let speed run off your vessel. Action taken to avoid collision with another vessel shall be such as to result in passing at a safe distance. The effectiveness of the action shall be carefully checked until the other vessel is finally passed and clear. So again, this is kind of a common sense paragraph you need to take action that's going to keep you a safe distance. The rule doesn't tell you what that safe distance is, but that will depend on your vessel. So whatever action you take, make sure you have a safe distance. And then you need to continue checking until the other vessel is finally passed and clear. So if you are ever asked at what point you can alter back to your original heading, the answer will always be once I'm finally passed and clear, straight out of rule eight. If necessary, to avoid collision or allow more time to assess the situation, a vessel shall slacken her speed or take all way off by stopping or reversing her means of propulsion. Again, this one kind of makes sense. If you need more time, just stop your vessel. Stop running ahead. Give yourself more time to assess the situation or avoid the collision. And now we're on to part F. Part F deals with not impeding the passage and safe passage. So it's actually quite a complicated rule and part F forms three parts. First off, a vessel which by any of these rules is required not to impede the passage or safe passage of another vessel shall, when required by the circumstances of the take case, take early action to allow sufficient sea room for the safe passage of another vessel. So a couple of things in here. Obviously the first thing that stands out is we're talking about not impeding the passage or safe passage. So within the rules, they'll talk about impeding passage or impeding safe passage, but the action taken is the same, regardless of whether it is passage or safe passage. And what we're looking to do is allow sufficient sea room for the safe passage of the other vessel. We're not talking about avoiding collisions. We're, allowing, we're talking about allowing sufficient sea room for them. 
Let's take this example of a crossing situation. Of course, under the crossing rule, normally the container ship is going to have to alter around to starboard to keep out of the way of the green bolt carrier. But, what happens if, for example, we say that the container ship is constrained by a draft? Now, the green vessel is required not to impede her passage. So what they've got to do is they've got to take early action to allow sufficient sea room. So, before the container vessel is going to want to take action under the crossing situation rule, the green vessel has got to take action to allow sufficient sea room. So in this case, she's going to make a bold alteration to starboard and parallel the course of the container ship. She's taken early action, allowing sufficient sea room. Then paragraph 2 of part F goes on to say, a vessel required not to impede the passage or safe passage of another vessel is not relieved of this obligation if approaching the other vessel so as to involve risk of collision and shall, when taking action, have full regard to the action which may be required by the rules of this part. And what this basically means is that you cannot say, oh, risk of collision exists, I'm going to apply the crossing situation rule and stand on. So we'll go back to our example here. We know the container vessel is actually the giveaway vessel. The green vessel is just meant to be allowing her sufficient sea room. But the action the green vessel takes needs to bear in mind what the container vessel may do. So, the green vessel alters round to port, she's got to remember that the container vessel may have taken action, assuming she is the giveaway vessel, which she actually is. In this case, constrained by a draft, she can't deviate from her course really, so all she's going to do is slow right down, and that's put the two on a collision course again. What the green vessel needs to do is bear in mind the action that she may take, which is why the typical thing to do would be to make a bold alteration round to starboard and parallel the course of the container vessel. Then the third paragraph just goes on to confirm that again. A vessel, the passage of which is not to be impeded, remains fully obliged to comply with the rules of this part when the two vessels are approaching one another so as to involve risk of collision. So in our example, although the green vessel is meant to not impede the passage, the container ship remains fully obliged to comply with the rules of this part when they're approaching one another involving collision, which means it's still a crossing situation, the container vessel is still the giveaway vessel, even though the green one should allow her sufficient sea room. And that brings us to the end of Rule 8. Hopefully you've found the information useful. If you have, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you want to stay up to date with all the videos that I publish, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.